Hey YouTube, what's up? Welcome back to another video in the series where I try to build my own tech company. Uh, or build an app or whatever it is I'm doing, I don't know anymore. Um, phone, quiet. Um, over the past week I've been working on getting this game up and running. And last week I checked in, I was able to render the test level. And now my next goal was to have a character and place them onto the test level and have them able to move around or maybe they could move around last week, but there was no animation. Turned out to be a huge pain in the ass. Um, I had a sort of a sprite sheet that was uh, part of the tile set that I'm working with. It's a Zelda-like tile sheet from itch.io. I'll try to include a link in it, a link of it in the description. Um, but going in and sort of manually um, chopping each frame of the, the sprite was a, a, a big pain. And uh, after I did that, then I had to use a, a program called Texture Packer to pack the sprite sheet, which also generated a JSON object that I could use in my code to map certain frames of animation to certain frames uh, in the code. And if you're able to see my screen, which I hope you are, you can sort of see that right here in this create method. Um, I have a directions object get to the correct file here. I have a directions object and then I'm mapping over that up right down left to create a walking animation and a hero animation. Um, and then when there is movement in the grid engine, which is the plugin I'm using to help facilitate the game engine, uh, we have a subscription running on that and we're animating a walking direction uh, based on that. We're also, we have a function here on line 70 to create a walking animation, a uh, function on line 83 to create an attacking animation. And um, in my update function, I'm listening for a space key above all of my cursor keys, and I'm playing the attack direction in, or the attack animation in that current direction uh, when the space key is pressed. So you can see my player. I've got a nice little animation here. I'm quite proud of it. The pink box around my player is sort of like the hitbox of the player. That only shows up in development. It won't be in the final version of my game. So I can move up, down, left, right, and collisions are also working as intended. So these uh, fences are set to collide with my character and uh, they, were, they were great. So, you know, they stop my character from going through them and uh, my walls and stuff like that will do that as well. There is one small problem. I mentioned earlier what a pain in the ass it was to sort of go in and uh, chop each frame of the character out of the sprite sheet one by one. So you can see even from the box here, the character isn't like 100% centered here on the box. It's like slightly, like maybe one pixel to the right. Um, and I wish the character frames were a little bit bigger. This also presents a problem when attacking. So you can see that when I press space, my character jumps to the right a bit. And no matter which way you're facing, the character will always jump to the right. And the reason for that is that the attacking sprites are twice the size of the walking sprites, which is that's just how they were packed. Uh, and it's how they would be packed by the texture packer anyway. So I'm really not sure how to get around that. Um, I tried setting an anchor point to all of my sprites as well, but that really messed up the hitbox for the character. And um, then the character's animation was playing in a different place than the, the hitbox was showing up. Um, so it was a whole separate set of problems. Regardless, I think my goal here is to get to an MVP state as fast as possible with this app that I'm trying to build. And a minor bug, a minor visual bug, like the character sort of appearing further to the right when he attacks, is not something that I should over-index on, uh, which I learned the hard way. I spent probably an entire day trying to solve this bug and just gave up because it's really not that important and it's something that might be fixed later on. The tile set that I'm using is not the final tile set that I'm expecting to use in my app or game. The character will look totally different. This is all just placeholder art anyway. And since I'll have to sort of rebuild this whole app, maybe not the whole app, but at least the visuals of it, once I um, get past the MVP stage of this, I figure that small bugs like this are not, like, 
I, I'm not going to let perfect be the enemy of great or good or finished. So uh, it is what it is, and I'm moving on to uh, bigger tasks in, in the coming week. So stick around. Hopefully there's more videos coming, and I'll keep you updated on the progress. Thanks.